Guys, there are spoilers for this film in this review. So, if you don't wish to be trapped, go out, watch the film, then come back. You have been warned. Hey guys, welcome back to another week of Ticket Tuesday. I'm your host, Ronan Tamish So yeah, this is going to be a great time. Hey guys, and welcome back to sort of Ticket Tuesday. I'm Ronan Tamish D, and this week we watched the new M. Night Shyamalan thriller, Trap, starring Josh Hartnett. This film was a just really thrilling, it was really fun, enjoyable, I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. But, before I go on a whole tangent, but why I like this film, I'll tell you why I like this film, and more, back at the house. What's with all the police trucks outside? The camera's everywhere, Jamie. I'm not supposed to tell. Don't rat me out. I won't. You know the butcher? The freaking nut job that goes around just chopping people up? Well, the feds or whatever heard that he's gonna be here today. So they set up a trap for him. There's no way to get out of here. Your daughter's never gonna forget this day. And welcome back to episode of Ticket Tuesday. I'm Russell from Time HD, and this week we watched Trap, the new thriller by M. Night Shyamalan, starring Josh Hartnett, Ariel Donahue, and Salika Shyamalan, who was actually the daughter of M. Night Shyamalan. She played the uh, the pop star in the film. Because uh, if you didn't know, if you didn't see the trailers, obviously it's like basically they're trying. There's like a bunch of cops surrounding a concert that like a serial killer is at and the main character is that serial killer that's not spoilers by the way like that happens in the first in the trailer they fucking reveal that shit so um yeah this film i thought was enjoyable i really i didn't i don't know i don't know if i'd say i really liked it but i liked it i think overall it was you know it was pretty on on the edge of your seat, you know, you, obviously being a thriller, you were like, oh, I can't wait to see what happens next, like, what's gonna happen, how's he gonna get out of this, you know, the whole concept of the film is, he is this, like, master, like, escape artist, right, and he's a great at, like, weaseling himself out of situations, right, and, like, he can cause distractions, he can, like, do all these things to cause chaos, so that he can get out of the line of sight, right? Get out of line of sight, get out of a situation. He's good at that. And the whole film is kind of building up to how will he get out of this situation? Well, he gets out of that situation. Now, how will he get out of this situation, right? Kind of, that's the, and then it builds and builds and builds until the finale of the film. Where it's like the final test of will he escape or will he not, right? And overall, I do think that I liked the i just liked his thing i liked how he was kind of the main character of the movie and he was also kind of the like the villain of the movie too like he was a bad guy but he was the central character which is kind of crazy to think about right where the villain is the main character kind of interesting right and the good guys they're kind of the antagonists right cuz he's supposed cuz the movie's about him escaping the trap they set for him right and like the he, he lives two lives right one where he has like a family with like two kids and a wife and obviously his murder murderer life where he like kidnaps people and tortures them and chops them up into bits and like throws them down a river or something right they don't really get into too much detail but he's a like crazy murderer right he's clearly not right in the head as somebody who's like murdered and butchered He's called The Butcher, and he's, like, butchered, like, 12, 11 people, so. Not very right in the head, as you can clearly tell. But, um, so that's his second life, is his evil, deranged murderer life, right? That's his second life, and obviously I described the first one. And the, his whole idea is, like, how can he juggle these two lives while not, like, while keeping his family away from it? 
by not revealing it because he's like a good liar, right? He's good at switching back and forth between, oh, I'm just a friendly old dad to a crazy murderer, right? Like a crazy serial killer to, oh, just your good old lovely dad. You know, he can switch between his two personalities on the fly, right? And the movie kind of begins the concept of who is the real Cooper, I believe his name was. Who is the real man? Is it the family man or is it the serial killer? Like who is it or or are either of those lives even who he really is, right? Like that's kind of the idea of the movie is did he want, well, obviously he wanted to kill people, but like is that who he really is or is that something he's doing as like a de demented way of dealing with trauma as a child or is he doing it because he kind of has a bit of like a kind of like a Jason Voorhees kind of thing going on whereas like mom is like like whenever he like almost kills somebody or kills somebody like or he's like seeing visions of his mom yeah so but I'm saying like it's not really all like Pamela Voorhees and Jason because there are differences in the fact that he, she's not really the mother in trap is not really like encouraging um cooper to kill people like 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 pamela on friday the 13th she's more just kind of visions because obviously clearly when he was a kid he might have been a bad kid he might have not been it's not really clearly said but he had a lot of mommy issues right he clearly went through a lot of trauma uh with his mother as a kid and that probably is what led him to you know, go insane and start killing people, right? Is probably his the treatment that his mother gave him, which is classic serial killer case of the bad parents, right? You know, abusive parents uh, is an abusive parent or a pair of abusive parents are a surefire way to eventually breed a serial killer, which is it makes sense, right? It makes makes a lot of sense, you know, the way. You know, they're young and impressionable, and if you give them the wrong impression at a young age, uh, it'll fuck them up, right? If you treat them like shit, it'll fuck them up, which it fucked Cooper up. And, uh, but then, a, a thing I did not expect was Shyamalan's daughter to be quite a central focus of the film. Uh, I, because th she's a pretty important character. She has a decent amount of screen time, decent amount of dialogue, and she's actually, like, kind of an antagonistic force to the Butcher himself. She is kind of an antagonist in the film. Well, since he's the main character, she's a good guy, but, you know, she's an antagonist in the sense of the story. Uh, and she, like, helps take him down. Like, she's the main driving force that helps take, well, take him down, right? Like, capture him and imprison him for the time being, right? Who knows if he escapes or not, uh, even though the end of the film kind of teases that. But um, she's there, and she's the main driving force as to the police tracking him down, finding his house, and, you know, kind of cornering him, right? And just, you know... It's just kind of, like, crazy to think. I mean, maybe not, because obviously he's a director, and sometimes directors do that. They put their kids in their movies. And actually, she wasn't that bad. I mean, she wasn't amazing, but, I mean, I wouldn't call her bad. Her performance certainly wasn't anything to scoff at. And honestly, I'd say she did a pretty pretty good job. You know, maybe if she continues to get into acting, maybe if she continues to get a few more roles, maybe she could get even better. Because, I mean... I, I can't remember seeing her in any other movies, so maybe, I mean, I doubt this might be a debut, maybe she's in other small roles, but I think she should keep doing acting, because she's pretty decent at it. But, uh, yeah, that took me a little off guard there, was her being a pretty pivotal character. And, I don't know, overall, I just also think it was fun to see the Butcher, like, try to, like, see his inventive ways of how he gets out of situations, right? See him cause chaos. See him, you know, do things to get his way, right? It's really interesting to see and anticipate what he's going to do. Like, what level will he go to get out, right? To get out of the concert, to escape the police, right? Like, what level will he go to and how, what level of his deranged insanity will he unlock to escape, right? Pretty much is what the film is about. And I think that's pretty interesting. I do, and also, uh, real quick thing, little tidbit here. 
which I also find a little interchange, just wanted to throw it in here. M. Night Shyamalan was not originally planned to write and direct this film. He actually just liked the idea of the story itself, but eventually he realized that he could put his daughter in it, and he was like, you know what, maybe I should direct and write this movie. He described it, I think, as what if there was like a Science of the Lambs, like, uh, Buffalo Bill serial killer chase going on at a Taylor Swift concert. That was kind of, that's how we described it. Uh, which I think is fun, right? I think that's a fun idea, and I think the film de executed it pretty well. And one thing, one more thing, one last thing, I really like how this film was just a straightforward thriller, right? There wasn't no unnecessary super duper twist. Yeah, there was a little, like, surprise at the end, but it wasn't like a twist twist, right? Like, I like how Shyamalan just kind of kept it straightforward, because I think Shyamalan is a good guy, he's good at making thrillers, but I think the problem with him is he's tried to replicate The Sixth Sense. He's, because that movie, the twist in that movie was brilliant, it was a genius twist, and everybody said that, but when it came out, everybody was gawking over the twist, and he's tried to replicate The Sixth Sense twist again, and again, and again, it just doesn't work, right, because... It's like trying to catch lightning in a bottle twice. Because, yeah, you catch it once, but it's lightning in a bottle. It's one in a million, right? But I, what I like about this, he didn't try to. He just tried to make a good movie, and I can appreciate that. And for that, I say I enjoyed it. And I think you could get some enjoyment out of it, too. You know, if you're a fan of thrillers, fan of Shyamalan. And overall, if you're just, like, a fan of, like, kind of, like... Kind of like a wild, you know, those like wild goose chase, like cop, like cop chase movies, you know, where like the cops are chasing a killer. If you like those kind of movies, definitely you could get some drama of it. I would recommend this film. And overall, I think I rated like a 7.5 out of 10. Really enjoyed it. I thought it was very, very fun, very thrilling. And yeah, I think I said what I say. I think I'm so in peace. So, guys, I hope you like this video. Share with friends, subscribe to the notifications on. Comment down below if you liked it. But you guys know it goes. I don't really say that. What I really meant to say is you guys hated this video. Unsubscribe, dislike, tell me what you hate me in the comments. And I've been running time HD. Off to catch a killer. <clears throat> Shit. Guys, I didn't plan on this. This film was, at least it took place in Philadelphia, and it was filmed in Philadelphia. I'm wearing... A t-shirt for a Philadelphia record store. What are the chances? What are the chances? I did not plan on this. I just thought it was a cool shirt to wear. And it's like, wow. Shout out to South Street Philadelphia Repo Records. Uh, we are not sponsored by Repo Records. But well, I wouldn't mind it. You know, send me some free stuff. You know, guys? Hook, hook yourselves up. We could, it could go well. You know, guys? could set a little thing up and uh you could go swimmingly you could go swimmingly set a little thing up <laughs> that one's good we'll keep that one in